Oh, how wonderful it is to be in His presence. Amazing grace, how sweet the experience. Amen? Some people can only sing. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Because they've heard it, but they've never experienced it. You know as well as I do that sometimes we sing songs not from experience, but from hope. (laughs) We don't sing because we know it. We sing because we know it's possible. That's what singing by faith really means. Living by faith is not having what you hope for. It's having hope that what you hope for is going to come and you will grasp it. But for those who know Jesus, they know the power of His Word. They know the power of His presence. They know the power of His sacrifice and promises For those who know Jesus, it's so much more than amazing grace, how sweet the sound. It's amazing grace, how sweet the experience. How sweet to be able to sing, I once was lost, but now I'm found. Not just in some generality, but specifically, I know the day that He found me. Do you know the day He found you? Is it lost? I hope not in some experience with others. It was a very personal experience. I have people sometimes that come to me and say, I gave my life to the Lord at this big convention, and they know more about the conference, and they know more about the speaker, and they know more about the situation than they do about what really happened in their life with Jesus. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Oh, it sounded good. But did you get it? I don't mean with your head. I don't mean with your ears. Did you get it? Were you set free? Or did you just get up and breathe a sigh of relief and then go back out to the same world you left behind? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound is just the beginning. Romans says, how will they No, unless there's a preacher. How will they hear unless there's a preacher? But the goal of the preacher is not just to get the word out. It's to get the word in. And I'm convinced today that we have a a lot of people who will hear the sounds of Christmas, but never experience the sound of salvation. Is that possible? Is it possible to be in the midst of all of the joy and celebration and and all of the, the pageantry and decorations and still miss it? Oh, yeah. Is it possible to have all of this emphasis? And, and you know and I know that there's going to be neighbors, there's going to be co-workers, there's going to be people who will rise up against the, 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 the challenge of the enemy who wants to shut Jesus and anything to do with him down. Matter of fact, some of you in this room, and we've got a button just for you to wear this season. Out there on the foyer, there's a button that says, Keep Christ in Christmas. No, wait a minute. It says, go ahead, tell me Merry Christmas. And if not, there's both of those buttons, and we'll get them for you if you want one. But I think it's such a dynamic time for us to say yes to Christ. Does that mean you're going to get some pushback? Absolutely. Jesus said, don't expect anything as a student that the teacher doesn't get. And the teacher got it. But is it possible to live in such a flood of opportunity for Christ to be glowing and miss it? Yeah. In these four short weeks that we have, I'd like us to take a look at the Gospels. 
of Jesus Christ. And we're going to start, we're not going to go in order. We're going to start with the shortest one. Anybody know the shortest of the four Gospels? Good job. 16 chapters packs the life of Jesus in. It takes Matthew 28 chapters. 21 with John. Anybody know how many in Luke? Got me a good guess right here. This is an open book quiz, and I'm going to take advantage of the open book because I just had a brain challenge. 24. Good job, Bobby. In the book of the Gospels, it's supposed to be about Jesus, right? To my question earlier, can people be in the midst of all of this emphasis and still miss it? Absolutely right. You know how I know? Because Jesus lived for 33 years and some of them missed it. Even better than the decorations, even better than the, the, the Christmas cards, even better than all of the innuendos or suggestions or blatant Jesus is the reason for the season. Jesus stood among them and they missed it. Don't miss it. Now, I'm preaching to the choir, and I realize, and I'd just like to know how many of you are in the choir. Thank you. Got four over here. The rest, okay, this sermon is applicable then to more than just the choir. I need the choir to say amen when you're agreeing with me. On behalf of those who aren't in the choir and need to join. Because it's possible, listen, it is possible to live in the land of the free and the brave. It is possible to live in a land where we have so much and you end up having so little. It is possible to be in a land that is supposed to be one nation under God and absolutely miss the whole beauty of one person under God living in a nation under God. It is possible to go through December 31 days and miss what happened. We live in a society today that has challenged us with many things. We have more information than other civilizations and generations of people have had. We know more about the stars and the planets than Pluto. We know more about humanity and the way people think and the way people function than some of the early philosophers and individuals who studied humanity. We know more about the microscopic world. Nanoscience has absolutely blown our minds because we didn't know it was there. But now we know. We're at a time where we have so much in our hands, literally. If you've got a smartphone right now, I hope you're not Googling something or, or being distracted because that's the other thing we've got is a lot of things that vie for our attention. If you've got a, bio, if you've got a smartphone and your smartphone doesn't have a Bible app, it ain't very smart yet. It just looks good. If you've got a Bible app, go ahead and get it to Mark chapter 1. And Troy, if you can bring up Mark chapter 1, we're going to walk through that. Good job, Eric. Our ushers are going to go to training, and we're going we're gonna to have them roam in the aisles to make sure everybody's on Bible apps. That was just a joke. But in case there's somebody in Indiana watching, or in India watching, may not be a bad idea to check your smartphone and make sure it's smarter. Make sure it's as smart as it can be. Because when you add God's word to your life, Proverbs says you'll be smarter than your teachers. That's Bible right there. Yeah. 
Is it possible for people to be in the midst of divinity and miss it? Is it possible for people to be in the midst of a time that has been set aside to celebrate and miss it? I hesitate and I pause because part of what I'm endeavoring to share may challenge all of us, I hope it does, with this reality. What we often choose to celebrate doesn't always match up with what brings joy to the heart of God. What we will spend our money on, our time on, can be a real opportunity for the glory of God, or it can be a real obstacle to the glory of God. I am not sure how much time is spent. I shared the story earlier about the guy who spent three months getting all of his Christmas lights ready just for Christmas. But I'm sure there's probably somebody in here who started shopping for Christmas before Halloween. I won't make you raise your hand. The Lord knows who you are. I'm sure there's individuals here who Long before Christmas came, they were already thinking about a lot of things that maybe really didn't have a lot to do with Jesus. And I remember, and it's, it's, it's so, such a challenge because, as you can tell, I'm really wrestling here because I'm trying to put it into words and Lord help me. But it's almost as if we have arrived at the point in our in our society, not you individually, but a society where Jesus isn't enough. We have to have something else. I've been in the North most of my life. When I wasn't in the North United States, I was in a place in Germany where they had snow in the wintertime. So for me, Christmas is like snow. And this morning, I have to admit, I drove to church and I was like, there's no snow? Is it really December? Check my clock, my calendar. Would it be enough to celebrate Jesus? Seriously. And if Jesus was enough, what would you celebrate? Let's take a look at Mark chapter 1. And let's see what Mark, who was a disciple of, a follower of Jesus, but he was a, he was a younger guy who worked with Peter. Peter's telling the story and Mark is writing it down what historians and Bible scholars have said. Peter actually tells this story and gets it written down before Matthew, Mark, or Matthew, Luke, and John. And according to historians and according to Bible archaeologists and all those people who study that kind of stuff, it was approximately about 55 to 65 A.D. Now, how many, how many of you know how old Jesus was when he passed away? Or was crucified? About 33, 33 and a half, somewhere in there. So figured out, 33 to 55. How many years is that? 22, okay. Can you remember what was happening 22 years ago? You're not even 22 yet, man. Hang on. (laughs) 
Can you remember when you were 22 years ago? 22 years ago, I was flying higher than a kite. Three years just married. It was the best. And it's only gotten better. But the reality of 22 years is a really short time compared to hundreds of years that other books that have been written, people say, oh, that's the absolute truth. Well, how long be between the incident and the recording? And sometimes it's 100 years. Sometimes it's 200 years. My point is this. Mark wrote down what Peter saw, handled, heard, experienced. If he were singing Amazing Grace, he wouldn't sing Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. He'd be singing Amazing Grace, how sweet it was to be found. And let me tell you about the journey. I once was a fisherman, but now I'm a shepherd. I once walked on water, but now I'm walking on streets of gold. I once used to do this, and now I'm... He would go on and on telling you about the experience. 22 years approximately had passed. Mark, a young man, writes down what Peter shares. Now Peter, the guy that walked on water, one of the three who went up to the Mount of Transfiguration, this was not just a scraggler that followed along with Jesus. This was one of the top three guys. This was the man who preached on Pentecost. Here's what he focuses on. And I would challenge you. Make sure your focus lines up with what really glorifies our God this season. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophets. Behold, I send my messenger before your face who will prepare your way before you. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John, who came baptizing in the wilderness and preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins, then all the land of Judea and those from Jerusalem went out to him and were all baptized by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey, and he preached, saying, There comes one after me. Oh, this is maybe where we get to this Christmas story, right? If you were reading along, you'll see we miss something. We we missed Mary. We miss Joseph. Wait, this this can't be the gospel of Jesus Christ. Where's the shepherds? Where's the wise men? Why why did we skip those guys and go to this guy dressed in camel's hair and eating locusts? Maybe that should be our Christmas story. But maybe maybe Peter will get to the the beginning. Verse 7, he preached saying, There comes one after me who is mightier than I, whose sandals strap I am not worthy to stoop down and loose. I indeed baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Where's the manger? Come on, Peter. Uh, you, you, you made mistakes, but you missed the story. Now, before you think I'm being too ridiculous, remember this. Mark was recorded, was recording this in about 55 AD. Matthew is recorded. Earliest copies are 58 
A.D. 55, 58, how many years? Do you realize that there were three years they could not read about the shepherds? Somebody getting the good news of Jesus Christ would have skipped right over Gabriel going to Mary. For three years, nobody told these people that there was all this other stuff going on that we know of. Because if they would have just used the gospel according to Mark, they'd have heard about John, but no shepherds, no wise men. Did Peter mess up? Maybe it comes up a little bit later. Let's keep reading. Verse 9. It came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth to Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And immediately coming up from the water, he saw the heavens parting and the Spirit descending upon him like a dove. Then a voice came from heaven. You are my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And then the shepherds came from the hillside and the wise men came and they presented their frankincense. That's not the next verse. Peter, you missed it, man. If you couldn't put them in there, you could have put them in here. This was like a grand moment. No shepherds, no wise men. No frankincense, silver or gold, no Herod. Maybe it's in the next passage. Let's look. Immediately the Spirit drove him into the wilderness, and he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and was with the wild beasts and the angels. Oh, there's the angels. The angels sing, Glory to God in the highest. I know, I'm wearing you out, aren't I? It's not there. Peter, what's wrong? Are you missing the, the really important stuff? Or maybe this is the important stuff. So let's read. Now, after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. And as he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you become fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. Kind of, that's kind of Christmassy. They left the hills, right? And they went. Verse 19. When he had gone a little farther from there, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who also were in the boat, mending their nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father, Zebedee, in the boat with the hired servants and went with him. Mm. Maybe he'll get to the Christmas story in the next section. Let's check. Then they went to Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath day, he entered the synagogue and taught, and they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as the one having authority and not as the scribes. Now there was a man in their synagogue with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone! What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had convulsed him and cried out with a loud voice, he came out of him. Then they were all amazed so that they questioned among themselves, saying, what is this? Hmm. That's kind of like Christmas. What child? 
is this? Mary, did you know? But we're, we're like 33 years after. Peter, you left out some stuff. If all we had was the gospel of Mark, would we have a Christmas pageant? Verse 27, then they were all amazed so that they questioned among themselves saying, what is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority he commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. And immediately his fame spread throughout all the region around Galilee. Well, we tried, but it was a real stretch to try to get Christmas into that one, wasn't it? Maybe it's in the next section. Let's, let's keep, have faith, hold on. Verse 29, now as soon as they came out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. But Simon's wife's, excuse me, but Simon's wife's mother lay sick with a fever and they told him about her at once. So he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up and immediately the fever left her and she served them. Hmm. Still no... Away in a manger. Let's try another couple verses. At evening when the sun had set, they brought to him all who were sick and those who were demon-possessed, and the whole city was gathered together at the door. Then he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and they, he did not know the demon, he did not allow the demons to speak because they knew him. Mm. Now, there's a little there's a little bit of Christmas there were some who knew who Jesus was and there were others who didn't know isn't it interesting that those who did know didn't do anything what they did know did you get that in other words even though they knew it didn't change their life And we know the story. We know the story about Mary and she was betrothed and the angel came and said, hey, how'd that kid say it? You're going to have a baby? We know exactly what he said because we've got other records. We know exactly what the angel said to Joseph. We know exactly what was happening and people involved and all the stuff, the shepherds and the angels and the frankincense and myrrh. We got all that together. But is it changing us? Or is it distracting us? Bear with me as I wrap up this chapter because I'm convinced Peter's got to throw something in here about angels or wise men or gold and frankincense or Herod. He's got to throw something in here, right? I mean, after all, this was the story that was going to be written down and it was going to be shared with other people so they could believe and receive and embrace this Wonderful promise of the Messiah. Verse 35. Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place. And there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him. When they found him, they said to him, everyone is looking for you. But he said to them, let's go into the next towns that I may preach there also because for this purpose I have come forth. And he was preaching in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and casting out demons. Now a leper came to him, imploring him, kneeling down to him and saying to him, if you are willing, you can make me clean. 
Then Jesus moved with compassion, stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I am willing, be cleansed. As soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. And he strictly warned him and sent him away at once. And he said to him, see that you say nothing to anyone, but go your way, show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing those things which Moses commanded as a testimony to them. However, he went out, finally, we've got something that connects with Christmas. He went out and began to proclaim it freely to spread the matter so that Jesus could no longer openly enter the city but was outside in deserted places and they came to him from every direction. But there's still no wise men. There's still no frankincense and myrrh. There's still no Herod. There's still no shepherds on a hill. There's still no angel choir. There's still no Gabriel. There's still no Mary. There's still no Joseph. I don't think Peter missed what was important. You see, the gospel of Mark was going to be sent to people who needed to know that Jesus could be a part of their lives now. Too many times we have walked through the nativity story, and I'm convinced that some people are so content with the nativity story because a little baby can't hurt anybody, can they? And as long as Jesus is just a baby in a manger, I'm okay with that. But if Jesus is going to walk into my church service and mess it up, we got to talk. If Jesus is going to heal my mother-in-law, we, we got to talk. If Jesus can heal diseases, then we need to talk. Today, consider this fact. The most important thing about Jesus is what he did, not how he got here. The most important thing about Jesus that Peter focuses on is what Jesus did while he was here for three and a half years, not what he said. What Peter focuses on, what Mark records, is what Jesus did. Not what he's going to do in the sweet by and by. 